It seems to me that um, a major question is um, that there appears to be a desire within the Caribbean for an integration movement of sorts, political integration movement in particular. While I accept the need for some pan-Caribbean movement, in the way I accept the need for a pan-African or pan-American or pan-Asian movement um, to help to identify those things which mark us as peculiar people within the world system. I don't necessarily agree that political integration is a critical aspect of the Caribbean need at the moment. Because I think one of the assumptions underlying the need for us to come together is that if we don't, we cannot survive economically, we cannot survive socially, or even politically in terms of having political sovereignty and a high degree of political maneuverability in the international system. There is that underlying assumption that unless we integrate, unless we unify as a political unit, we cannot achieve those things. I don't accept that because I think in this world there are justifications for small states existing as separate and independent units. We have a choice, it seems, either to try to develop within the Caribbean a societal system which becomes a microcosm of that which characterizes the advanced societies. Not merely the skyscrapers and the um, consumerist goods of that society, but even the behavioral patterns and the ideological preferences of those societies. And I don't think that we necessarily have to go that way. I think the justification for being a small state is to create an alternative society, freed of the well-known dissatisfactions of ordinary people with societies created in the industrial society. Just to give you a very simple example, to get in from Kennedy Airport to this place. You know, it took over two hours. And I couldn't imagine, you know, spending four hours going and coming to work, just merely, you know, spending that time on the road in the business of getting to work and from work, and then having to work, and then having to go home and do other things, like entertain myself and my family, and also to rest up, to come back to that grind day in, day out. I regard that as an ugly aspect of living in an advanced society. So that I wouldn't wish to see things like that recreated, the chaos of urban life recreated in the Caribbean area. So I think we have the opportunity now to try to find the appropriate societal form, the appropriate state system, which will be different from um, what has occurred here, while not necessarily rejecting many of the consumerist orientations, some of the creature comforts of the advanced world. And we need to find an appropriate system. And to my view, it is in some form of socialization of the means of production and distribution of the rewards of production within the society on an equitable basis. No, I have no problem with what is happening now. That's a sort of West Indian cosmopolitanism has emerged, that we can make friends with the Puerto Ricans, the Panamanians, and so on. And we sense a common history, the need to defend ourselves against um, international interests. We have set up um, negotiation groupings to negotiate with, with LOME, the ACP, the African, Caribbean, and Pacific groupings. But also within that framework, there is a Caribbean group which seeks to identify and clarify its position within the ACP group in and so on. In dealing with the United States, we, through the CARICOM, the Caribbean community, um, in the English-speaking Caribbean, have been trying to um, negotiate with the international world on the basis of common strength and so on. But many of these efforts are hampered by the absence of political authority to impose the, on the territories and to make them committed to them, the decisions arrived at when the heads of governments meet and so on. And what I'm saying won't happen, and probably should not happen, is political integration, where the entire economic and social life is directed politically by one Caribbean head one Caribbean government, and so on. And I'm saying that 
the assumption on the line that, that we need to do that is that we cannot become economically successful. We cannot enjoy the material benefits of the advanced societies unless we do that. And I'm saying that I don't think that is right. And there are the virtues of smallness which we can achieve, which do not necessarily characterize the advanced societies. You know, so the whole problem of uh, unity within the di diversity is uh, very important in the, in the Caribbean discussions, and it's a, a, a long, uh, you, you can trace it in history a long time ago, and you can uh, speak of it in terms of, of future also, and in terms of, uh, in terms of future, I think we have a, a good possibility in that sense uh, of, of really establishing some, some elements of a, of a, a future uh, society, of you know, a better society, uh, with that concept of unity within the diversity, because you find in the Caribbean uh, one of the areas of biggest diversity and with strongest unity uh, in, in, in what we were talking at the beginning of the sort of the history of the, of the people, of the, sort of the, the counter history against the metropolitan, the metropolitan uh, interest. Uh, and I would like to, to take a point that Eric was uh, presented at the beginning, and it's this, uh, these cultural elements uh, that, that unite us, that unite us uh, within a great diversity of other, of other things, uh, which are mostly uh, really very popular elements. And Eric uh, gave the example of the pirates, and I think it's a very good example, because while the different metropolitan uh, powers were fighting uh, against each other tremendously, in, in uh, the pirates' world, uh, the, I mean the popular pirates, not the pirates mm -hmm. like Drake, or pirates like, like Ofreci, for example, in Puerto Rico, which was really a, so, a social bandit, uh, the, the ship, I have seen documents, the ships of Cofresi were filled, uh, his men were present all out throughout the Caribbean, people from Panama, from Haiti, from, from Jamaica, from Martinique. These were the people that were fighting with, with Cofresi. So there was really a, a, popular, a popular response to the metropolitan uh, fight, a popular that, that united the Caribbean people. And I think we can find other elements of that in culture. Uh, for example, uh, the music, for example, the music. Uh, I think there are very, very strong elements of, of unification, uh, of relationship of Caribbean, of Caribbean music, uh, the different type of music, music from the Spanish Caribbean and music from the English Caribbean, from the French Caribbean, uh, have very, uh, very strong common elements, very strong common elements that, uh, that uh, makes a, uh, you know, some, some form of expression uh, possible among, among people. And I think another element that we, can, we, don't, we have to, to bring is the, and well, Eric was bringing it at the beginning, uh, but we can stress it, is the, the movement of people, uh, migration. And this, uh, within the Caribbean, which is very strong and has been very strong for many years, uh, and also to, for example, the United States, uh, and uh, we have uh, found, uh, uh, so, sometimes we find our common cultural elements when, when people from different parts of the Caribbean are together in another place. Uh, and at least with uh, people from the different Spanish uh, Caribbean and the French Caribbean, I think they have, they have found a lot of common elements living, for example, in New York. And, uh, and, and to, to continue with the example of music, for example, the, the new, very important Puerto Rican music, uh, the yes. salsa, which is uh, the, really the musicians are really from all out the Caribbean, are Panamanians, uh, Colombians, Dominicans, Cubans, and Puerto Ricans playing together uh, and, and finding together a sort of a common sense of, of unity, which is, is not only being expressed now in, in the music itself, but also in the lyrics of the music. Yes. And I think these are also uh, very important elements that we could... Uh, the, the, the point you raise about the, the, the sort of relevant level of political integration and management, I think is, is a serious one. It, it, it may not be possible to translate, you know, common cultural currents into viable common political structures, 
Um, I mean, I having briefly been to St. Kitts and Nevis, for instance, even mm. those two little islands are very different. They, mm. they have a very different structure. One is more plantation-oriented, was more plantation-oriented, mm. the other one more small farm-oriented, uh, different lines of migration and so on. Uh, what each of these places needs is somewhat different. Uh, mm. Santo Domingo, Cuba, and Puerto Rico, certainly, maybe Las Tres Hermanitas, you know, mm -hmm. three sisters, um, but they are... They're sometimes hostile sisters or different sisters, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, at, at the same time, so sm there must got to be some kind of political expression of particularity. Mm -hmm. And smallness may be a virtue in this. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think of the, the way, let's say, political uh, life is organized in New York State. There are lots of municipalities and towns that are very small um, that have jurisdictions over particular territories. Their problems, however, are the same. Uh, real, interest, real estate interests uh, don't, don't care where they land, but they manage to take these divisions and benefit by them to create office buildings and, rail, uh, and road construction and, and, and feed capital accumulation in a way which is quite detrimental uh, to the localities, but the localities have no way of confronting this, this invisible giant. And I suspect that uh, that is very often the case in the Caribbean. That is, although one is linked by fate to a small space and uh, has sort of, there are particular problems in that place, the problems that face the Caribbean uh, militarism, imperialism, uh, control from the outside, uh, the movement of capital are global general problems and the small islands be can become sort of sitting ducks for this kind of... Uh, and the two levels of organization in fact that come in here uh, agree that there are common problems that would need to be dealt with by decision-making structures, administrative structures, which in effect are state structures. Yeah. And certainly I don't think it's practicable or desirable to have one uniform state structure for the whole Caribbean. And I agree entirely with Neville that mm. there should be the political decentralization that would permit necessary differences to continue to express themselves. Uh, while at the same time there can be a lot of cultural interconnections, a lot of cultural mm. sharings, and yeah. music uh, is the, the as it were, key mm -hmm. uh, example. Um, but then, and again, uh, when we're talking about unity through music, it, it struck me listening to Angel that um, you know, there's a great problem here again of organization. When we shift to the level of organization of people to resist, to create the necessary political conditions and the necessary state forms that will permit the resolution of problems. But I'm afraid the thought that, that struck me listening to Angel was a, was, a, was a rather cruel one, that it would be all very well for everybody to get together and sing and dance, but they'd sing and dance and walk into the machine guns without organization. And you can share music, and you can share dance. Salsa can be universal for the Caribbean, or reggae can be universal for the Caribbean. But how do you organize politically to uh, ensure that Caribbean peoples get the right to make their own decisions and the right to have their own distinctive political forms? And that, I think, is where we come back to the other side, to the division. So, so even in, one can't, for example, at the moment, it seems within, say, uh, Trinidad or Suriname, one can't reconcile all the ethnic groups or uh, the different nationalities together. So it, we have this enormous problem of political organization at the, at the base, as it were, before we get to a state form level of organization. And there's also the problem of the economics of it all. Because whatever you do, it has to be paid for. People have to be able to produce surpluses and so on. And so far, most of the Caribbean states of whatever linguistic um, origin have opted for what one can call the 
development by invitation model. And while it has yielded variable success, or success at various periods in their history, they're all aware that this model won't survive. It won't be the basis of their survival um, in the future. And hence, we had Cuba and the experiment in Grenada, which was cut off so suddenly. And presumably, there will be other experiments within the area we define as a Caribbean area to try to find ways of organizing material production and delivery of material goods and services in a way which brings the Caribbean in the 20th century, but also allows each country within it to have a distinctive identity. And this is where we have met the greatest political reaction coming from imperialist powers so far. And we're going to continue to meet that oppression. And this is where the Caribbean won't unify, in a sense. You know, nobody will come to the rescue of Cuba when it says, look, we want to trade with the United States. The other Caribbean islands are obviously not willing to say to the United States, this is nonsense. Um, this is not the way to if you wish to bring back Cuba into the sphere of influence that you feel you should have over it. I mean, isolating it won't help you. But at the same time, if we go a different direction, are you going to respond to us in that way? And the other Caribbean territories have not seen that they could support an effort of Cuba to have trade with the U.S. without supporting it ideologically. In other words, just seeing the thing that there are ordinary people in each Caribbean territory who should be fed, housed, and clothes. I'll give you another example. Um, when Maurice Bishop was in charge of Grenada, the United States government decided that there had been no aid from the CBI to Grenada. And we all know that there are poor and hungry people in Grenada. And if the strategy was to help those people, then regardless of the character of the regime in power, one, one should continue to assist as well as possible those people. But in, in that uh, same, uh, same problem, this economic thing, uh, problem you, you bring in, I think it's very interesting that uh, at least uh, within, the, the, within the academic world, uh, there has been a growing concern of, of trying to, to work together. And for example, uh, to mention the, uh, you mentioned Grenada. There, uh, there was a, an institution that was uh, being formed there of uh, of study of of small island economies, mm -hmm. and this uh, this institution, which uh, the, uh, with the invasion they didn't have a chance to to materialize, but uh, there were plans of doing it. Uh, some. Uh, Puerto Rican colleagues were working on that, uh, and uh, people from other parts of the Caribbean uh, trying to uh, to really to work out alt alternatives of uh, within a, a similar economic uh, problems of this of small island economies, and and uh, what we hope is that this this uh, endeavor that it's still at least in the economic side is still more. Uh, academic than, than official or popular could move into more to a more popular feeling, but it's still a, at least it's a step. Mm 